Hi, I'm Willie, and welcome back to my channel. So guess what? Unify 5.4.11 has been released, and it looks like it may have been pushed to the repos a little uh, quicker than what it usually is. Now, a lot of you commented and emailed me and said, hey, did you know 5.4.9 has been removed? And so I checked it out, and indeed 5.4.9 had been removed, and then I started doing a little investigating. And if you go over to the community and you look at the 5.4.11 stable release and you come down and you look at the controller bug fixes, you will see this fix radius profile migration issue. And that was one of the main reasons that it was pulled under certain circumstances if you're using WPA Enterprise and you upgraded you could have had an open network condition instead of it being WPA2 Enterprise. So Ubiquity was very proactive in taking that down and fixing the problem and letting people know how to fix the problem. And then uh, 5.4.11, kudos to Ubiquity for moving so quickly. A lot of times we see for security problems, um, and I'm not just saying this about Ubiquity, I'm saying this in general. Sometimes when we see you know, security issues, it can take 30, 60, 90 days to come to resolution. Ubiquity was on top of it. They realized that there was a potential issue, even though not everybody was seeing this behavior. Um, you know, and, and like I said, it was with this radius profile migration. So kudos to the, the whole Unify team for reacting so quickly and making sure the customers were taken care of. There are a few more um, controller bug fixes and changes. They added the um, add migration site, so the export site wizard, concurrent L3 device adoption, improved dates in the statistics, statistics pages. There was a report of the database backup being slow, so they addressed that issue. They also fixed the database migration issue and updated port speed availability for 10 gig ports. So, um, and you can take a look at some of the other changes they backported from 5.5.3, which of course is another testing version. You know, feel free to take a look at that. If you're not in the beta program and you have an environment where you can run beta, it's not recommended to run beta in production if your production network is important and, and can't have things pop up that need to be addressed. And then you can see that they're adding more things that are specific to Unify Elite talk about the firmware changes and all that good stuff uh, more importantly for us now uh, in the last video that we did on unify you would remember that we were on 5.4.9 well I got involved in a, uh, a forum thread and somebody had lost the ability to pull up this web page and they wanted to know could you reset the cloud key to default by SSHing in and the answer is yes you can and I'm gonna do a video on that um, and um, I actually, if you go out to the community, I can post a, a link to the, the thread where we talked about it. But yes, you can, anything that you can do through this, you can actually SSH in and perform those options. So we're back to 5.3.8. Now I have a backup to 5.4.9, that I uh, a manual one that I made. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna log in. I just did some base configuration on this. We're gonna go ahead and log in we're going to perform the upgrade and then we are going to uh, restore from that 5.4.9 and that config should come in. So we'll log in. And when I did that, that factory reset on this, it went all the way back to the image that was on the cloud key. So I'm sure I could tinker around and figure out how to make like 5.4. Whatever the default image, you know, without messing with the underlying operating system. Uh, the cloud key is really neat and I learned a lot about it while poking around trying to figure that out. Uh, we will go to settings and maintenance. We are going to scroll down and you can see that uh, I had already hit apply update because I had somebody else... Uh, get a hold of me today and say, hey, did you know that, that uh, 5.4.11 was in the repositories? And I wasn't expecting it until the 13th because I believe that may have been the normal timeline, but it was it was there today, which is fantastic. So I'll be getting a hold of my, my friend uh, to help him finish a project that he's working on. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click Apply Update. 
and I've already got the backup. So it is going to do its thing, and we'll be right back as soon as it upgrades. Okay, so you can see that the update is ready to be applied, so we'll go ahead and apply the update. Yes, confirm, and now it's going to go ahead and do its thing. I'm looking at the LED. See what is going on here. Oh, we are rebooting, so I'm going to click cancel on that. When I first looked, I still had a solid blue light. And then uh, now we're blinking, so the update process is happening, and we'll be right back. Okay, so we are rebooted and back. So we're going to log in here. And it's taken a minute. The cloud key literally just rebooted. So we'll give it a second to get, get caught up. All right, so we're back. We're on 5.4.11. And you know what? I don't know if there's an actual OS update. It says it's checking for the cloud key firmware. But no, we are up to date on that. Okay, so we are, um, you know, we're logged in here now. And uh, what we're going to do, just check this out. Yeah, so everything is still... It's still default, so um, what we need to do is we need to restore. We're going to choose our file, and we are going to choose, this is our 5.4.9 file. Are you sure? Yes, I'm sure. System is being restored, and my cloud key has uh, the same IP because before I factory defaulted it, I went in and I set uh, static mapping for that in the edge router, so we're all good there. So the system is being uh, restored and is starting is restarting. So I've got a lot more Ubiquity videos that I'm going to put uh, precedence on that and the micro tick, um, and we're going to mix that PFSense and all those other Linux security distros. I want to start the PCI compliance stuff, and then also um, I have started 3D printing, and this is a piece that I just did for my wife. So I will mix some of those videos in. Uh, I'm going to start printing things for people that have mobility needs or special needs and uh, may need apparatuses to help them do things that that uh, most of us take for granted. So, uh, you know, those videos won't be uh, the main content, but I will probably sprinkle those in over the next six months or a year. All right, so it looks like everything's back here. And we log in. We'll see if our devices are here. Hey, 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 look, there's our devices and everything um, is there. Looks like we got some uh, firmware upgrades that we can do. So um, I will do the switch and then I will do the USG. Um, and, um, you know, everything will be up to date. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And I suggest that, that uh, you always upgrade to the most stable firmware that um, that is secure that allows you to operate in the capacity that you need definitely if you're on um, 5.4.9 go ahead and upgrade to 5.4.11 and um, if you've got any questions or comments you know put those put those down in the the comments as always there's going to be links down there where you can buy this equipment and um, you know if you enjoyed the video please give me a thumbs up please subscribe please comment and share and I'll see you in the next video